welcome to Art on the Brain. I'm Kelly Drake, and today I want to show you something that you can do with Daniel Smith Iridescent Gold Watercolor Ground. This is something that has really been inspired by the tulips in my garden this year. They grew up so big and beautiful, and I was really excited that the deer didn't eat them this year. <laughs> Last year they ate about three quarters of them before I really even got to pick any. So that's where this project starts and this is the photo that I decided to work from. So what I did was I wanted to make a nice Mother's Day gift for my mom and I took this box and tried to make it look kind of like a lacquer box with a tulip design on the top. And this iridescent gold watercolor ground just lended itself to this project so I thought I'd give it a try on wood. And I did another video on this, experimenting with watercolors, just in my art journal. So if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link up top there. Um, so I put one coat of gold watercolor ground, waited 24 hours, put another coat, and waited 72 hours for it to cure completely before doing this. Now I'm starting out with a quinacridone violet uh, under painting and I just thought this would be kind of nice to kind of map out the shadows and the light and um, also put some of that cooler red in because this photo and um, this painting will be very dominated by very warm reds and I don't want it to be all one uh, one hue and have it be super flat. So I think this cool red will really lend itself to um, creating some shadow and creating some depth within this flower. It's also, I find it somewhat difficult to create enough depth when I'm painting tulips, um, as opposed to flowers with, few, with more petals and lots of layering going on. And so I think that will help with that too. I really want the eye to be drawn into the center of the tulip. And as you see with the photo above here, um, the eye really is drawn in with that bright yellow contrasting uh, with the darker um, stem or the shadows of the stem uh, toward the center of the flower. Now up here there's other tulips in the background um, that haven't opened quite as much and I thought those really make a nice backdrop for this bigger tulip. And, uh, just creating a lot of shadow back there so that um, the cooler color hopefully will kind of uh, fall back from the warmer color of the orange, orangey red in the foreground. And so we'll give you also a little more depth in this painting. Um, I'm also gonna use a little bit of this quinacridone violet even when I paint the leaves so that um, it just moves that color around so that you don't have it only in one place. And I like to just put a little bit of that in with the green um, as a complementary color to um, neutralize the green a bit and uh, let it fall back in the background as well. So just kind of carving out some of the shapes back here and uh, some of the shadows. And I'm really liking how the this gold watercolor ground is absorbing the paint just enough so that it uh, works like watercolor but it's not quite as absorbent as my usual watercolor paper um, although arches has a lot of sizing to it um, still is a little more absorbent than this is um, so the paint does sit on top for a little while um, and it stays wet for it for some time so What's nice about that is you have some time to think about it and move the paint around, uh, whereas on some papers you really don't have that time. It, it gets absorbed and it dries really fast and you're done. So one nice thing about this watercolor ground is it does appear that you have a little extra working time with it. However, you also have to be pretty patient to let that uh, wet paint dry and not move it around too much or get your hand in it when you're painting something else. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Now I just mixed this red with some of my cooler red, uh, a little bit cooler red and thacrinoid red along with some quinacridone gold. 
to make it a little more of an orangey warm red. And I'm using some kind of lemon yellow to go around some of the edges here that have yellow on the edges of the flowers. And some of those areas I'm just going to leave um, with the metallic gold because it's really pretty. And some of them I'm going to emphasize a little more if they're really bright in the photo. Um, and that's just a subjective move um, and totally up to the artist what you think looks best. So there, as the orangey red was kind of drying, and uh, or as it was still wet but not completely and not completely dry there at the center of the flower, I went ahead and added some of that quinacridone violet and let it bleed in um, so that it created a shadow there toward the center of the flower. So adding some of this orangey red to those flowers up above, and you can see how it really makes a nice color over the top of the quinacridone violet. And I was a little worried that because this um, watercolor ground isn't quite as absorbent as paper, that uh, the second layer might pick up the layer below. But actually it's staying put very nicely, and I'm able to um, paint quite a few layers over the top without having trouble with the paint coming up from below. And one thing I don't really care for is the lemon yellow that I chose. It might be a cadmium, not sure. Um, so it's a little bit more of an opaque yellow watercolor pigment. And uh, I don't really like the way it looks over this uh, iridescent gold. And I think it's because it's a little too opaque and so it just blocks out the iridescence. and. Um, has kind of a funny look to it. So toward the end here, I think I'm gonna break out my watercolor pencils and use some of that yellow to enhance that and um, paint over it some. Because I think the transparent, very bright pigments in the watercolor pencils will look a little better than what, what this looks like here. Also, the opaque yellow is not blending very well when I go back and try to blend it in with the wet paint. Um, I can't pick it up very well. It's just kind of staying put. So I probably would not use that again. Although um, in the end it just it turns out fine. It's just being picky and I'm trying to give you the benefit of my experience here. So as you can see, you can put multiple layers on here. It's not picking up the paint below. It's going over quite nicely. And um, all in all, it's a really nice painting experience. I enjoyed painting on this watercolor ground and um, was really happy with the, the look of the watercolor over the gold iridescent ground. Um, this is very different from painting over the black watercolor ground. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a, a link above. Um, but that was also very fun for different reasons. And I think when I did the black watercolor ground, I had only let it uh, cure for 24 hours because I think on the bottle it says 24 to 78 hours cure time. And I would really recommend uh, letting it cure as long as possible. Like this one, um, as I said, it cured for 24 hours. I put on a second coat because I wasn't too happy with the coverage with one coat over the wood and then let that cure for 72 hours. And this um, is, has been a much nicer painting experience than it was when I only waited 24. So I would say the longer you have to let it cure is probably the, is better. It definitely is a little more absorbent, a little easier to work with, and there aren't um, patches within the watercolor ground that, uh, that repel the paint more than others which I was kind of finding with the black when I didn't let it cure longer than 24 hours. So yeah, just going around. And as you can see, you have to paint sections of the flower that are the petals that are away from each other. Um, if you want to paint petals right next to each other, you have to go away and let it dry and come back. So um, I have a my technique is to just paint an area, go to another area, and just keep working. Um, some people might not like that because it's hard to just, like if you want to concentrate on one flower or one area, it's difficult to do because you have to let things dry in between or use uh, 
a blow dryer, which I wouldn't really recommend with this project because too much water and paint sits on top and I think you would end up blowing the paint around and ending up with some um, drips uh, kind of being blown around the, the painting, which wouldn't be good. Now just adding a little more of that quinacridone violet over here in the shadows of the leaves. And I'm going to paint the green over this eventually. So that's getting quite purple there. I'm getting a little worried about that getting too purple. So here I'm actually removing some of it. And this is actually a good exercise to show that it can be removed. So I'm um, just getting that area wet with clear water and blotting it with a paper towel. And quite a lot of that came out, although it's still stained, which I'm happy about because that's probably about the color I need underneath the, the green leaves at this point. Also, as you can see, I painted some of these other little flowers that are in the background, and I did it in a kind of a decorative way because um, I want this to kind of look like a lacquer box, and I want the flowers to be somewhat decorative and um, design oriented. So. Um, I apologize for my camera, something happened, shut off for a short time and you didn't get to see me paint those, but um, they're painted very simply with just some of my orangey red, some of my quinacridone violet, and um, down below there I mixed some of the quinacridone violet with some blue. Now I'm breaking out my Caran watercolor pencils. And just going to use these to brighten up the flower a little bit in certain areas um, where I didn't have quite bright enough watercolors paints to do it. So, um, and I wasn't happy with the opaque quality of my yellow paints, so especially the yellows. I have a yellow and a yellow orange here. And as you can see, when you just uh, draw on a little bit of that, and then you can um, go over it with water and, it, and just get these really nice bright colors. And what's really nice is this orangey red that I mixed uh, really is coming up in the water and so I can mix that right in with the yellow pencil when I add water to the pencil and it's bleeding together nicely so there's not a strong edge between those two colors. So still adding some more yellow to the center and this is really going to help draw your eye to the center of that and a little bit of contrast there and with the um, center of the flower. Um, and what's really fun about these pencils, and they're working really well on this watercolor ground by the way, is that you can just um, sketch a little on and although it doesn't look like much dry, once you add the water you can really see that color um, come to life and they're really nice vivid colors. Um, so, and, they, and they'll dry nice too. So you can just add a little bit of contrast here, um, brighten up some areas that weren't quite bright enough, and you have a lot of control with these, which is nice. Um, I have a pretty rough surface that I've created with this watercolor ground because I used a utility brush that I just got from a paint store. And um, it's just a nylon brush, it's pretty soft. Um, but I just brushed the gold ground on and, and just weird strokes all over just as if you were gessoing a canvas and the same with the second layer and so what I like is the texture it created you can see the texture in these petals and as you go over with the pencil you can really see them and um, to me that adds a really nice dimensional feel to this painting that it wouldn't otherwise have if it was smooth. Now if you prefer the smooth uh, look for your watercolor ground you can always use a foam roller and they sell these at um, hardware stores, paint stores, and Home Depot and they're just little foam rollers that you use to paint woodwork and doors and that kind of thing um, and they used to always be used with enamel and now probably you can use it with uh, semi-gloss and gloss paints as well just to get that smooth smooth stroke without a lot of texture. If you find the consistency is a little too thick to roll with your foam roller, also you can mix in a little bit of water and dilute the watercolor ground. Um, on the gold watercolor ground jar it says you can dilute up to 
which isn't very much, so you'd have to be pretty careful not to dilute it too much. And then what I would do is put on um, a little bit of a thin coat and then wait a day and then put on a second coat. Now I've found a little bit of difference in consistency between the different colors. Uh, when I tried the black watercolor ground, it was quite thick um, and it went on in one coat and really that was enough to paint on. Um, and the gold to me wasn't quite as thick and I really felt like I needed two coats. So this is kind of important to know because um, you get more, uh, more out of it when you buy a jar of black and they cost about the same price um, it just goes farther because you only need one coat so um, just something to remember now just um, finishing up here with the watercolor pencil getting it wet and uh, moving it around and just brightening up these flowers a little bit and doing some blending between that and some of the yellow that I've put here and there um, I also mixed a neutral with my um, undersea green and the reddish, uh, the orangey red that I made to, to paint the stamen in the center of the flower there. Um, and also just adding a little bit of detail here and there where I didn't have the folds of the flower um, very well accented at the very tips of the petals and making sure that those stand out. Because with tulips there's not a lot of detail, they're very simple flowers with very few petals really. Um, I think it's important to get those little tiny folds and um, just whatever little bits of detail that you can find in the flowers to paint so that it uh, has a little bit of a, a dimensional feel and a little bit more realistic that way. So now I'm just using um, a quinacridone rose to uh, make these flowers down here a little warmer and to um, paint a little bit of that over the green so that um, it looks like there's flowers in, uh, in there deeper a little bit too. It's not just one layer. I'm just darkening up some of this green. This again is just the undersea green. I just use the same green throughout because the green to me is a background color and I just want it to um, help to bring out the reds but not draw too much attention. So I'm not going to put all the yellow greens and the blue greens and everything. I'm just going to kind of go with this one green over the gold and I like the way it looks and um, I'm just going to fill in around these flowers here. I debated whether to fill in this green although it's in the photo. Um, I just kind of liked how these flowers ended up looking like almost like a, a piece of origami paper up here in the corner um, because I really enjoy collage and mixed media projects. I liked the way that looked, but then um, in talking to my daughter, we decided now nah, that we probably should put in the green and have that fall back a little bit because it was drawing too much attention away from the main focus, which is the giant tulip in the foreground. So just touching up the green here and there. And I decided to lift a little bit off the edge of this petal. Again, uh, I didn't have quite enough of that fold at the top of this petal as I did on the other ones. So if I lift a little bit of this color off and the gold shows through, I think that will help. And I'm just accenting it a little bit with that pencil. Uh, the, with these kind of paintings, I think you just keep painting and working and um, redoing things until you think you're done <laughs> and uh, just try not to overwork it but really only you know when it's actually done and I'm saying it's done. So now I'm outside because I'm going to spray some fixative on my new box that I just painted with the gold watercolor ground and I'm going to use some of this Daler Rowney uh, colorless fixative um, to just make sure that that watercolor is protected. And then I'm gonna put a couple coats of gel medium over the top, maybe some varnish, just to make sure that it's really, really protected and that nothing's gonna to happen to it. So, I have to shake up this pan quite a bit. Make sure it's 
sure it's well mixed. And then I'm just going to spray my uh, box probably three or four times um, with some time in between to let it dry. I'll just show you how I do that. Um, so here's my box. And I put it in this big, I have this big ugly old box that I put it into and I protected it uh, with some newsprint. But um, what's nice about this is it has some flaps so that when it's a little breezy like it is today, the fixative doesn't go everywhere and it just hopefully keeps it in this one area. And you know you want to be outside when you spray fixative so that you don't end up with uh, fumes in your studio or in your house. Breathing those fumes is horrible. So here we go. I'm just going to spray off to the side to make sure it's coming out right. And then I'm just going to fog it back and forth like that. Now the next coat, I'm going to let it dry and I'm going to go up and down this way. Or I could turn the box and keep going sideways. But each time I'm going to vary the stroke so that it goes up and down or back and forth. Okay, so I've given the box time to dry. I'm just going to turn it on its side. And same thing here. Now that I've turned it on its side, I can spray it the same direction. So I'm just going to shake that can really well to make sure it's all mixed. Start it off to the side and then just fog it the same way. Now at this box I decided to do four coats of fixative and letting it dry in between. And now I'm going to put some gel medium over it. I actually think it doesn't really need the gel medium, but it makes me feel better because now that the watercolor is fixed and it's not going to move, I just want to put something kind of thick over it to make me feel better and know that it's not going to get scratched or if a little water gets on it, it's not going to destroy the painting. Um, so it makes me feel good to have just a thick coat of gel medium over it before I put the varnish on. I think actually the varnish would probably be enough, but I'm just being extra careful. So here it is dry, and the matte finish um, just kind of killed the iridescence of the gold. So now I'm going to go over with a gloss varnish. This is just a water-soluble acrylic gloss varnish and I'm not um, trying to make my strokes go with the painting or anything. I'm just kind of going over it um, willy-nilly. And uh, now it's dried. I'm putting on a second coat. And as you can see, it just puts a really nice gloss finish on there. And that's going to give it more of that lacquer box look that I want it to look like. Now this is, I'm going to do the sides. This is just black gesso, which is just an acrylic primer. It's going to go on very, very flat. Um, but when I put my actual black paint over the top, I'm not going to need nearly as many coats because this black gesso is going to cover really well and give me a nice black flat finish to paint on. So I'm just using my acrylic brush, painting it on there, and um, I have a, a piece of paper towel that's damp um, handy here. Not real wet, but just damp so that when I accidentally get a little bit of black on the top, um, which is coated with that gloss varnish, I can just wipe it off very easily. Even if it dried a little bit, I'd still be able to wipe it off because of that gloss varnish. It just really protects that painting well. And as you can see, I got a little bit on the hardware too, and so I could just wipe that off as I work. Um, around some of these little pieces, I'm gonna have to switch to a smaller brush to get in there. And just painting very carefully, although I sped this up, took me a while because I was painting carefully taking my time not to get too much black paint on things that I didn't want it on. Um, this is a good trick to put an old brush in there just to keep it open while it dries so that the box doesn't stick together. Now I'm just taking some of that black gesso and painting the inside lip of the box now that the outside is dry. Um, I thought you just cannot help but get a little bit of black paint on that lip and so if I paint this on it'll give it more of a finished look 
And I want to leave the inside natural just because I think it looks nice and I like the smell of the wood inside the box and I think my mom will like that too. So now I've painted the whole thing black with black gesso and I want to give it more of a finished look. So I'm going to mix my black acrylic paint along with my uh, satin acrylic glazing liquid. And you could use matte medium or you could use a glazing fluid or lots of different mediums for this. I just like the glazing fluid because it gives you a little more open time and it dries to a satin finish, which is a little bit glossier than the matte. So it looks a little more formal, um, but I didn't want the whole thing to be glossy and I didn't especially want the black to be totally flat either. So anyway, so that you don't have to watch me paint the whole thing black again, I just did that for you. And you could see the finished product is really nice. And this will make a lovely gift for my mom for Mother's Day. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of the Daniel Smith Iridescent Gold Watercolor Ground and give it a try. And now don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and stop by and check out my webpage, my Facebook page, or take a look at my Instagram account if you'd like to learn more about me, my art, and my children's book illustrations.